Hello, I'm Dr. M. Welcome to VMC. Today we're going to cover the recent research that was published looking into dog grief, specifically how dogs grieve when a second dog in their household dies. Join me, you'll learn something today. So it's important that we remember the dog brain, we roughly correlate to approximately a three-year-old toddler, human toddler. Um, and so we have to keep that in mind when we're trying to interpret the results that we have from this study. And we do also have to be very careful not to give human emotion or human purpose to the behavior changes that we're noticing because we don't have any way of knowing um, for certain what the animal is feeling, whatever the real underlying cause is, doesn't matter as much as the fact that we need to recognize and expect for there to be behavior changes in the remaining dog, and then we can better prepare for and support that dog. What I did find interesting was that the length of the relationship between the dogs did not correlate with any increase in likelihood of having these behavior changes. And that's interesting to me. I had thought that maybe having a longer relationship between the dogs would increase the likelihood of seeing behavior changes, but that wasn't the case in this study. What did make change in behavior more likely was how the two dogs interacted with each other. If their relationship was described as being a friendly one or a paternalistic or maternalistic type relationship, then in those cases, it was more likely to see behavior changes after the death of the other dog in the household. So the study found that just over 13% of dogs had no noted changes in behavior from the people that lived in the households with the two dogs. Um, and then of the remaining pets, there were changes in behavior and the study breaks down how long those changes lasted for. 25% of them had behavior changes that lasted longer than six months. 32% of the remaining dogs had behavior changes that lasted between two and six months. And almost 30% had behavior changes that the owners noticed that lasted less than two months in duration. So this is very good information for us to have so that if there is a euthanasia upcoming for a pet in a household that we can prepare the people of the household to expect behavior changes in the remaining dog and to go over some things that you might see when you need to seek veterinary intervention and what you can do to try to support the dog. So the most common behavior change that was noticed was that 67% of the dogs increased the amount of attention seeking that they did. And then just over 50% had less activity and just under 50% also played less. 35% of the dogs had an increase in the amount that they spent sleeping and again, 35% also had an increase in what the owners felt were fearful behaviors. Just over 30% ate less than they used to or had changes in their eating habits. And 30% of the dogs also started to vocalize more. One study noted that 83% of the dogs ate less after the death of a housemate, and another study found that 36% of the dogs ate less after the death of a housemate. So now we have this information, which does fall very closely to the Schultz research. That does make that finding a bit more reliable, if you will, although definitely further research is necessary here. And since we're being very careful not to have an anthropocentric interpretation of these behaviors, we need to consider the reasons why the dogs might have these changes. So in this study, the likelihood of the dog demonstrating fear behaviors was correlated with how distressed and upset the owner related feeling themselves. 
And so this does bring to mind one way to perceive and, and think about this study. We, uh, we do know that dogs are very capable of picking up emotional states from people. And when people are fearful, there are biochemical changes in their body. And it's even possible that the dogs are able to smell those and that their behavior changes might be a response to the changes in the humans that they live with. Um, there is a good amount of research already available that dogs do feed off of the emotion of the people that they are bonded with. It is logical that that would then produce fearful behaviors also in the dog. We also have to consider the fact that because the owners who took part in this study were grieving themselves, that that could change their perception of how their dog is behaving. It's possible that the influence of their own grief means that they put meaning and interpret their dog's behavior in ways that may not actually be accurate. And lastly, we also need to consider the effect that schedule change has on dogs. And there is previous research that indicates that any changes in schedule can be quite stressful for dogs. In the end, it doesn't matter all that much if the dog's behavior change is because of grief or loss, or if it is also influenced by human behavior change and by schedule change. We still are noticing these behavior changes in the dogs, and so it's important that we're able to support them as best as we can. And so maintaining the same schedule as much as possible, making sure that we're taking the dogs on snafari style walks where they they get to smell and investigate and roam around somewhere safe, of course, on a long line that's very enriching for them. And having that exercise also will help to release endorphins in their brain and that will help them to feel better. The exercise will also help to support their appetite and so that will reduce the likelihood that the dog stops eating or eats far too little. Um, and it's also important that we recognize that the dogs are often very in tune to how the people are feeling and because of that, that we try to be cognizant of that and just offer attention and support to the dog if they are soliciting that attention from us. Um, if they need the comfort, then we should provide it to them. And then just being aware that we could see changes in our dogs and support the dog as best as we can. And if you already have implemented the sniffaris every morning and evening and you're offering your dog comfort and quality time when they want it and you've kept your schedule as close to the same as possible but you're still noticing that your pet isn't eating very much or is acting quite distressed always get in touch with your veterinarian because we have appetite stimulants that we can offer for a while to help out and support the dog. We also do have medication that can be used for short-term situational anxiety and fear and distress. And so those medications can be used and then weaned down as time passes. If you have learned something from this information today, please like the video and subscribe if you aren't subscribed already. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I hope that you have a wonderful week. Talk to you soon. Bye!